Hey there folks and welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at how to control Cubase remotely using an iPad with a free app from Avid. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell, but for now, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to the App Store and download the Avid Control app. Once you've downloaded the app, open it up on your iPad and you'll be presented with this screen. One thing to remember here is that your iPad and your PC should be on the same Wi-Fi network. So if you've got, for example, I have a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz choices for my network, make sure they're both on the same network, otherwise they won't connect. If they are, go ahead, click on OK to find and connect devices on the network and click on get started. This will then open the main sign in screen. If you have an Avid account then sign in. If you don't have an Avid account then you can create one and it will take you through the process of doing so. Next thing you're going to want to do is to go over to avid.com and sign into your account using the same details that you've just set up on the iPad um, or your existing details and go over to your account. Click on my account and you'll then have a list of products effectively if you then click on view my products and then click on the drop down for avid control and eu control then view software download links and product details and then you want to click on eu con workstation unified install for either win or mac dependent on what you're using once you've downloaded the installer go locate it in your download files and then double click on the exe file in order to start installing. Once the installer comes up saying welcome to the install wizard, click on next and then that'll give you your choices of what you want to install. For the purposes of this all you want to install is the top one, the S1S3 Dock Control Stroke Artist Series. I've already got it installed so it says installed at the moment but it'll be blank for yourselves. Just click on the first one and then click on next and follow the instructions through in order to install Avid Control or sorry the Yukon Control. Once you've downloaded the EU Control down in your sort of system tray here you should see a little icon here an E in a circle which will be blacked out at the moment because it's not being activated at the moment. The next step is to then go over to Cubase, go into Studio, go into Studio Setup, go to Remote Devices, click on Plus and choose EUCon. Once that comes up then just click on OK. Now I'm going to go over to a split screen to show you the rest of the setup process and how it all works. Hi there, so I'm up in the left. Um, in the right I've got a live picture of my monitor and my iPad. Down in the bottom a live screenshot of Cubase and down in the right a live screenshot from my iPad. So you can see down in the bottom I've got the Avid Control app open on the iPad but at the moment it's all blank. So in order to get everything activated this is what you need to do. Go down to the system tray on Windows, open it up, right click on the EU control icon and click on EU control settings. That'll open up this box that you can see down in the bottom left corner and you'll see here I've got Avid control available. If I click on that and click add, you'll then see over in the bottom right everything springs to life in the um, on the iPad in terms of the Avid Control app. So I'll just close that dialog box down now. And there we have it. On our left, in the bottom left, we've got Cubase. And in the bottom right, we've got the Avid Control app. And what you can see here is if, for example, if I move some of the faders up and down on the iPad app, you can see me moving those up and down. Um, the corresponding fader moves up and down in Cubase. There's many, many other things I can do within here. So this is the mixer view. Um, I can, uh, let me see, um, I can sort of solo items and you'll see up on Cubase, um, the Poly 6 there is soloed. I can turn that solo off. I can mute. You'll see as I press the mute on the iPad, the mutes will be coming up in Cubase. Those are all moving up and down. I can arm recording. So as I'm pressing these on the iPad, the recordings are being armed. Uh, I can open up the panning on the iPad. And if I open up the panning on uh, track four, down the bottom, you should see the left and right indicator on track four moving backwards and forwards um, in Cubase. So this is, I'm not using a mouse, I'm not um, touching Cubase, 
I'm doing all this via the iPad. There's various others. I can click on uh, the read write automation and set that automatically from my iPad. Um, I can control the transport controls from this main one. So if I want to uh, play uh, the start of this track, so we'll just kick that off. And then I can stop it from there. Um, I can rewind it. I can put the cycle function on. So if I press cycle on the iPad, you'll see the purple indicator light up at the bottom in Cubase. And then also have at the bottom here, I have a soft key button, which brings up a whole host of sort of Cubase commands effectively available via various soft key shortcuts. But that's not all. I then also have on the iPad, so you'll see coming up in the bottom right hand corner, I've got a track view, so this is all of my tracks. And so for example here, um, if I press mute, I can then simply go along these buttons and mute out as I want. So I'll start playing and then I'll mute things in and out and you'll, you'll see what I mean. So if I get to a, a part with lots of things playing, I can mute these parts out bring them back in, take the drums out, bring the drums back in, take the vocals out, bring the vocals back in. So very, very simple, very, very quick and easy to use. Using the track function, I can also control whether they're armed to record, I can solo, I can mute, I can do various things within this page. There is also then a channel page. From here, I can choose individual tracks and I can control, again, various parameters within Cubase from inserts to equalizers, etc. There's then a meter page, so this is quite good. I tend to have this running so I can drop, if I bring the, if I drop the meter off of Cubase, I don't need that up on the screen because I've got it down on my iPad below. Um, and again, if I start to play, you'll see all the meters running. And you can choose various parameters as to how many meters are shown within the screen. Um, I think it's up to a maximum of 12 meters. So if you've got more than 12 tracks, you can just scroll, scroll across quite easily um, and check the levels. And then we also have a huge array of soft keys. So if I open the soft key thing here, as you can see, that's on page 82 of the soft keys. Um, if I go through them, some of them are sort of empty blank, but literally you can customize this to however you want. Um, there are absolutely tons of soft keys in here, background color modulation, transport tools, um, equalizers, insert section, um, basically all the commands that are available within Cubase are available here as soft buttons and just at the touch of your fingertips on the iPad. There's then a section for filters and layouts and then the overall settings so you can customise various things within here as you see fit. In order to fully customise the app you'd go to the EU con icon in the system tray uh, and open that up and that gives you a number of ways of customizing things. So that's it. That's the Avid Control app and how to use it to remotely control Cubase. It really is a fantastic little app. There are other apps out there, but from what I've seen, all of them you've got to pay for. But unbelievably, this one from Avid is free. Anyhow, if you've got any questions on this, then please leave them in the usual place down below. Or indeed, if you've got any other comments, all feedback is greatly appreciated. And also, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. But for now, I've been Graham. Take care and catch you later.